If you've been keeping your ear to the ground lately, you'd no doubt have heard of the System Shock remake in development by Night Dive Studios, but something else Night Dive have been diligently working on is a remaster for Turok 2 Seeds of Evil. Originally released in 1998 for the Nintendo 64 with a pretty lackluster PC port also released around the same time. Night Dive Studios have again really gone to work here and updated almost every aspect of the game's presentation and controls to make it more than playable in our current year. The original PC port, quite frankly, was a piece of shit. It had a really inconsistent frame rate, hit detection issues, which I think was a result of the V-Sync, or the lack thereof, and it was the complete opposite of what you'd want for a PC port in general. Thankfully with this remaster, Night Dive have done a pretty bang up job. Taking a look into the options menu, you've got a whole heap of visual settings you can mess around with, from things like anti-aliasing and motion blur, through to water reflections and ambient occlusion. With everything cranked up to maximum, it does look pretty damn good, all things considered, and it seems to run pretty smoothly as well. I think most importantly, like their remaster of Turok 1, you're able to significantly improve the game's draw distance, making the levels look less foggy. But what I really appreciate is some of the gameplay changes they've added in. Now, this is nothing too major, just small tweaks to improve the original formula. So for starters, there's now a kind of grapple move where you're able to pull yourself up ledges. This seems like it might break the game, but it really doesn't. It simply makes certain platforming sections a little bit quicker and allows for a slighter larger margin of error without taking away from the game's challenge. Another addition and something I can really get behind is the option to turn on indications for crucial items in the environment like switches or objectives for the mission. Anyone who's played Turok 2 knows it can be a really confusing and challenging game at times and having the option to see where a nearby objective is can be a real godsend. Don't worry for the purist out there, this can be turned off along with the weapon crosshair and everything else deemed casual by elitist, but for newcomers this makes the game much more accessible, and can truly take a bit of the burden out of how confusing the levels can at times be. I think for me personally the best change they've included is an alternate weapon bobbing option and the all important FOV slider. The original Turok PC port gave me motion sickness for a whole heap of reasons with the FOV I think being the major contributing factor, and the option to modify this is pretty much game changing, literally. It's kind of staggering too just how well this game holds up when the simple things like the controls and visuals have been fixed up and without trying to sound like a graphics whore I'd say it makes the game even more enjoyable. A lot of the issues with the hit detection and the way the weapons control and handle feel vastly improved from the original PC port, a port which, let's face it, kind of sucked. I mean, I don't think anyone genuinely is going to say that playing the game at 15 frames a second on the Nintendo 64, or at a 4x3 resolution on an old half assed PC port is better than playing it at 1080p with a stable frame rate. So what can be said about Turok 2 as a game, because I am kind of assuming here that most folks have played the original game, well, if you haven't, let me talk a little bit about the game itself. I am Turok! I'd say Turok 2 is easily one of the tougher FPS games ever made. You're playing as a dude named Joshua Fireseed, helping out an alien chick named Adon to defeat an evil alien known as the Primogen. All up, there's only six levels, but there's a crap load of stuff you have to accomplish in each level. Unlike Turok 1, which was mostly just a key hunt, Turok 2 gives you tasks to complete, which change for each level to stop it from being tedious or boring. In the first level, for instance, you've got to activate a few distress beacons and rescue some kids. In the second level, you're destroying two demonic soul gates and killing three undead witches. In a later level set inside an alien spaceship, you've got to destroy embryos and take out a master computer with satchel charges. On top of that, you need to grab three keys to unlock the next level in the hub world. You're also looking out for a sacred feather that grants Joshua one of five abilities. You're looking for the key to the Primogen spaceship, as well as six pieces of a nuke weapon, which is similar to the Chrono Scepter in Turok 1. Then before you can actually finish each level, you also have to defend an energy totem from waves of enemies, so it's not just a matter of running around until you find the exit. Most of the time too, you won't meet the requirements for acquiring certain items and will have to come back later on down the track. Mission accomplished. And that's where a lot of the difficulty lies in Turok 2, not in fighting enemies, which are pretty simple enough for the most part, as long as you're not brain dead, but navigating the complex environments to complete your objectives and acquire all of the items along the way. Some of the later stages, like the Hive of the Mantids and, dear god, the Lair of the Blind ones, are utterly confusing with multiple portals to contend with in repetitive corridors and areas that all look very similar. If you get lucky, you'll find the end level portal with all your objectives complete, and if not, well, you can at least start from the beginning and get searching for the ones you've missed. In terms of the shooting, Turok 2 is still a really solid game, even almost 20 years on. Some of the weapons are just truly kick-ass, even something as basic as the bow is awesome and the way it leaves an arrow stuck in an enemy just as an example. 
One of my favorite weapons is the Firestorm Cannon, which is basically a minigun that feeds on plasma ammo. Another cool weapon is the Razor Wind, which is like a serrated disc that returns back to the player after you've thrown it. And of course, no Turok 2 review would be worth its salt without mentioning the Cerebral Ball. Only usable against intelligent species of enemies, this thing launches a homing projectile at enemies which latches onto their head, sucks their brains out, and then explodes. I also have to mention the level of violence as well, which is just awesome. Being able to blow the body parts off an enemy or taking a goddamn chunk out of their chest with the shotgun still looks great. And the way that blood sprays out in every direction when they're hit by a bigger gun, or the way they flinch from being hit with something as small as the pistol is still very impressive. I think the only thing we had on the PC at the time that came close to this amount of gore was Soldier of Fortune, which I think maybe just beats Turok 2 in that department. But then again, Turok 2 was built for a Nintendo 64. Imagine what they could have done if they developed it for PC. Playing Turok 2 again for this review, I kind of have to admit I have a bit of a newfound love for it. I mean, I've always enjoyed the game, but I still found myself appreciating it a lot more this time around. The original PC port did a grave disservice to the game, and I'm happy to say that the remaster fixes all of the problems I originally had. Turok 2 is really a quintessential example of an age where games didn't hold your hand and let you kind of learn things the hard way. It's like the old saying, you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink, and that's how I look at Turok 2 on the whole. It's a game that gives you all the tools to succeed, and if you're going to squander them, well, that's on you. The real testament is, like I said before, how the game still does hold up almost 20 years after its original release. And being able to do things like manual save and customize a whole heap of gameplay and visual options to suit your personal playstyle makes the game appealing to, I think, the modern demographic of gamers. And I forgot to mention the remaster also brings back the multiplayer mode. So if you played this game when you were a kid, well, you're gonna love revisiting it again. If you didn't play it as a kid, or maybe you're a bit younger and this is your first time checking it out, well, I'd say that all the bells and whistles that Night Dive have added in will make it much more accessible. Either way, Turok 2 is worth checking out for people who like shooting games and don't mind a game that doesn't sugarcoat its challenge. Mission accomplished.